This is a so-called Tesla coil, but a very small one. It generates a high frequency, high voltage inside of the main coil and that ionizes the air at the end of the copper wire and the air will glow due to the created arcs. Depending on the Tesla coil power, the voltage arcs could get bigger. This project is very cool to look at, but not just that, it could also wirelessly transport power for some sort of devices, like for example this small neon light. Or a compact fluorescent lamp like this one. As you can see, even if we don't have wires connected to the light bulb, it will still light up, because this circuit could generate very high voltage, in order of thousands of volts, and that could excite the fluorescent material inside of the light bulb. So how does this Tesla coil works and creates these high voltages? In this video we'll cover the main theory about Tesla coils and see a few schematics and examples as well. Be careful working with high voltages, because those could hurt you. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my work as well. So let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. They now have an SMT service meaning that you could get the PCBs with all the components already mounted. You could get really nice results for your PCB projects and receive the board with all the components. Go to GLC PCB and select code now for the SMT assembly. Upload the Gerber files of the PCB. Then check assemble your PCB and select the PCB side. On the next page upload the boom and the pick and place files. Finally, confirm the components you want to solder on your PCB and place your order starting from only $7. What's up my friends, welcome back. Here I have mounted the most simple Tesla coil circuit. Actually, this is called a Slayer Exciter circuit. As you can see, we have just a BJT transistor, a light emitting diode and a resistor. Then we have 3 windings as the primary and 350 windings for the secondary, which is this big coil. When I supply power to the circuit, around 15 volts, as you can see a very weak voltage arc is created at the end of the secondary copper wire. In a moment we will see how this circuit works and the theory behind it, but before that let's see another basic circuit that I found on the internet for a small Tesla coil. As you can see this one is also very simple. Now we have two transistors. One is once again a BJT, but now we also have a MOSFET. Now the gate of the MOSFET can be connected to an audio jack and by that we not only regulate the frequency of resonance of the coil but also the amplitude, so we could hear the music coming out from the voltage arcs. The voltage arcs can be created even if music is not playing, but at a constant amplitude. Let's start with the main voltage Tesla coil circuit based on the gap spark. This is the circuit. As you can see this one is directly connected to 230 volts AC from the outlet. That is connected to a transformer that will increase the voltage even more, up to thousands of volts and also separate the two parts of the circuit. That transformer will charge up this capacitor, till the voltage is high enough that a voltage arc is created between these two points. When the arc is formed, a current change will be created through the primary winding of the Tesla coil. That will create a magnetic flux that will induce current in the secondary, so a voltage drop is created. Now usually the winding ratio between the primary and the secondary is very high, so the voltage at the secondary will be very very high. So now those voltage arcs can be created. But now you might wonder, how is the voltage arc created, because this is an open loop. I mean we have high voltage on the top of the coil, but there is no connection to the opposite side so the spark would jump. But actually the voltage arc will be created between the top of the coil and the parasitic capacitance created by the air around. This capacitance is very small, but good enough. So the air at the top of the coil will ionize and voltage arcs are created and shooting out through the air. 
But now what about that gap spark? Let's see some more theory. Air is a good insulator. That means it won't conduce electricity. But in reality, any material could conduce electricity. It all depends on the voltage value. If we take a look at this table, we can see that we need 3 million volts per meter in order for the air to become conductive. 3 million volts per meter is the same as 3000 volts per millimeter. So if we have two metal wires separated 1 millimeter one to each other, and the voltage between these wires increases up to 3000 volts, electricity could now flow through the air, and by breaking the air it will glow and also create a sound. And that's how the voltage arc is created through the air. Ok, now let's take a look at the Slayer Exciter circuit and see how this one works. Remember that for this circuit we only had a BJT transistor, a resistor and a diode. When we apply power at the input, the circuit will resonate and create a high frequency, high voltage arc at the end of the copper wire. We've seen a similar circuit in another past tutorial, when we've made the homemade arc lighter with a high voltage transformer from an LCD screen. The secondary coil must have only one layer of windings, otherwise there will be a voltage drop between one layer and the other and voltage arcs could jump between the windings and we don't want that. Also you might want to cover the windings with some plastic tape or maybe some resin in order to prevent voltage arcs between the windings of the secondary. Ok, so this is the Slayer Exciter circuit. This is more than simple and works with low DC voltage. When voltage is applied to the base of the BJT transistor, the transistor is now turned on, so current could pass from the collector to the emitter, and at the same time through the primary winding of the Tesla coil. That will induce current in the secondary and create a voltage drop. So we have positive on top of the coil and the negative polarity here. So now this negative polarity is also connected to the base of the transistor, and when this value reaches the threshold value of the diode, it will then pull down the transistor base and by that it will turn it off. But this is just for a brief moment, because now the magnetic field in the primary will collapse and invert the polarity in the secondary. So now once again the transistor will be switched on and the entire process will repeat on and on, creating the resonance frequency given by the entire circuit values. And again if you wonder, how is the negative voltage created by the secondary have any effect over the transistor base since there is no closed loop? Well once again we have the parasitic capacitance created by the air around the coil. So in that way we have a closed loop, and the voltage on the secondary could affect the transistor base. Ok, now let's take a look at the second circuit with the audio modulation. Remember that this time we also have a MOSFET, and the rest of the circuit is practically the same. I'm using the same coil as before, and this one is made out of 350 windings of 0.12 copper wire. The secondary coil is 55mm height and a diameter of 20mm. The primary coil are just two windings around the secondary and that's it. In this case we can see a little bit more powerful arcs. And when the music is played, the amplitude is also modulated and we can hear the music through the sparks. This is the circuit this time. We still have this block with the BJT transistor connected to the primary and the secondary. The voltage created in the secondary will control the BJT transistor base and by that create the high frequency and high voltage just as before. But now music signal is connected to the MOSFET gate. That will also modulate the amplitude of the voltage applied to the primary. So by that the final output voltage. By changing the amplitude according to the sound signal, the arcs will be stronger or weaker, depending on the audio signal. So that's how we control this circuit with music. There are plenty of other circuits for Tesla coils that are much more powerful. I am working myself in designing a winding robot, so I could wind my own coils. And then I might make a bigger Tesla coil and maybe we could learn even more about these circuits. Also have in mind that the circuits we have seen today have no feedback control. For better and more precise circuits, we need a feedback in order to fine tune the resonance frequency and the needed voltage value for the coils but more about that in a future video. I hope that you now have a basic idea about this simple Slayer Exciter circuit and how high voltage and high frequency Tesla coil works and also how voltage arcs are created through air. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my videos. With this help I'm able to create more cool projects. So thanks again and see you later guys.